Hello again everyone and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video I wanted to do something new and cover a security topic because it's long been something that I've been wanting to get into on this channel. And now that this channel is basically being rebranded as a version 3.0 as I like to call it, I wanted to basically test the audience and see if you guys want to hear more about security. So in today's video what I'm going to do is talk to you guys about a very specific vulnerability, which is CVE number 2020-1971, and it actually has to do with OpenSSL, which is kind of a big deal. And why is it a big deal, you might ask? Well, because OpenSSL is essentially the standard when it comes to SSL and TLS. It's essentially the means by which you can have HTTPS in your address bar and secure your web app. So when there's a bug in OpenSSL, that's a big deal because basically everyone uses it when it comes to SSL and TLS. Now for most IT administrators and security professionals alike, their biggest fear is to have their company's confidential and proprietary information leak onto the public internet. Now for this vulnerability, it won't actually result in the leakage of your company's confidential data, but what it might do is bring your company's web app down which will cause your organization to basically lose money. So essentially what you have to do is make sure that you have updated OpenSSL to version 1.1.1i, which is the patched version that you'll need to have installed on your server in order to be protected from this particular vulnerability. But that does require a restart of your application, which is very, very hard for a lot of companies out there. Now obviously if your company has a system where you can basically restart applications or even entire servers with no disruption at all, you're doing it right. But most organizations out there, they're not going to be quite as advanced as you are in this case. A lot of organizations will need to actually at least restart their applications or even restart their entire server when they install an update such as this one. So what exactly is this vulnerability that's dubbed 2020-1971? And how might an outside attacker use it to bring down your company's application? Now, without getting too technical, an OpenSSL certificate has a number of fields contained within it. And with this vulnerability, if two fields are compared in a very specific way, it can result in a null pointer exception, which essentially is a seg fault, aka a crash. And then, well, your application comes tumbling down. And then your customers won't be able to access it. And that would be a very bad day. Among the components within a typical SSL certificate are the common name field, as well as the CRL or certificate revocation list. And that's actually a very important one because if your private key, basically the private key of your certificate leaks into the wrong hands, you can't trust that certificate anymore. You have to revoke it. And if you do, then basically the certificate revocation list will include the fact that you have revoked that certificate, which means nobody should trust it anymore. And the CRL itself includes a location where your browser or whatever happens to be checking the cert can find a list of revoked certificates to know whether or not it can trust it. And that location can be an IP address, a domain, and so on. Now the common name field is a lot simpler because that just basically includes information about your organization, company name, email address, domain name, and things like that. But it can also include an EDI party name, which is a means by which you can actually exchange electronic data, which is where the problem comes. If an outside attacker is able to craft a malicious CRL, then have that compared against another common name field, then essentially your app comes crashing down. So what I'm going to show you right now is an example of this vulnerability, and then we're going to talk more about it. So here on my laptop, I have two tabs open, and they are both going to the same server. On one tab, I'm going to simulate the server, and then on the other, the client. Now, in a real-world scenario, the client end would actually not be on the same machine, 
because essentially the server would represent your company's web app, and then the client end would actually be someone accessing the site on their browser. If the user on the client end was actually tricked into loading a malicious CRL when visiting the site, then that's when this crash could potentially happen. Now here on my server, I am inside a directory that is cleverly named after the vulnerability itself. Now inside this directory, we have a few files, and the files in green, simply titled C and S, are binaries that can help me trigger this actual vulnerability. The S refers to server, and the C refers to client. Now in this tab, what I'm going to do is run the binary for the server end of things, which is now running. In this tab, what I'm going to do is have it run the client end of things, but what I'm going to have it do is run the task one minute from now so we can make sure that we catch the output. And the command I'm going to have it run is the C binary in this case. And now the job is scheduled. So what we do in this tab is simply wait, and then we should see a seg fault if the server is vulnerable. And sure enough, we did actually get a crash. Now pay attention to this right here, where we actually see that we got a segmentation fault. So OpenSSL did indeed crash. Now normally, all I'd have to do is install the most up-to-date version of OpenSSL. Version 1.1.1i is the patched version, but as of the time I'm recording this video, that patched version is not available on the distribution that I'm running. This is actually CentOS 7. And even though there's been a bit of drama when it comes to CentOS lately, you can see my other video about that card right here, CentOS 7 is still supported, and sometimes there can actually be a lag in between when a patch is made available and a distribution makes that patch available to their customers. And when the patch does come out, then you'll either need to restart your application or your entire server, which means that whether or not this vulnerability impacts you, at least in the terms of a hacker taking advantage of it to bring your application down, you still need to bring your application down yourself to patch yourself from this. So either way, this is something that could actually impact you. In some cases, you won't even get the latest version of OpenSSL even if you do install all the updates. And that's one of the things that makes this CVE in particular a high risk. Older OpenSSL versions won't be patched with the fix. And that's especially true if the distribution that you're using has reached end of life. Thankfully, Kernel Care has stepped up and has backported OpenSSL's 1.1.1 patches down to 1.1.0. So if you use Kernel Care Plus, you can apply the patches to both supported and unsupported OpenSSL versions. Now normally in a situation such as this, you would actually just install the updated package and then restart the application or the server and then, well, you'd be protected. But the problem here is twofold. One, there actually isn't an updated package available in the repositories of the distribution that I'm using at the moment. Normally this isn't an issue because a lot of the distributions out there, they patch fairly quickly. But in addition to that, the pain point is, well, restarting anything, actually. In a typical organization, it's a major pain to even just simply restart an application because that means that your customers are going to be disconnected from your site and, well, you'll lose money. Now, if you are an organization, again, that has some kind of automated means like a load balancer, something like that that can take your customers from one server, point them to another one, and then you can update your application and then restart it and there's no problem, then you're doing it right. But that's easier said than done because a lot of organizations aren't set up that way. Their applications don't work that way. So basically you are suffering from the choice of having to either A, let a hacker bring down your site, or B, bring it down yourself before they get a chance to and then patch it. Now actually, I think that this is a great example in favor of my sponsor, Kernel Care Plus, because their service actually makes it so that you don't have to restart your server when you install an update, and Kernel Care Plus is able to patch OpenSSL, and it's able to do that without requiring a restart of your application, which means you can actually have your cake and eat it too. You can actually patch this vulnerability and not have to disconnect your customers from your web app. Now, whether you are using Kernel Care Plus or you're doing it the old-fashioned way and manually installing the patch and rebooting, you have to do something 
because as an IT administrator or security professional, security vulnerabilities are something that you have to deal with on basically a daily basis. With kernel care, situations like this are easy because again, you won't have to disrupt access to your application to benefit from a patch. So I highly recommend you check them out. I'll have a link in the description below. But either way, as an IT administrator, an IT professional, you have to do something, you have to keep up with these kinds of things, and this is content that I hope to make more of in the future. If you guys are interested in the security aspect of Linux, then let me know in the comments down below, and I'll consider making more content just like this. In fact, I've been thinking about doing an entire security series, and if that's something you want to see, definitely let me know. But in the meantime, make sure you subscribe because I have some awesome content coming very soon, including a Docker series that I'm very excited to unveil. I can't wait. So again, subscribe so you'll be the first to see the notification when that series becomes available. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.